Third Freestyle Drive. Got a real special guest in the car with me today, all the way from St. Louis. Got my brother Tef Poe. Yeah, man. What's going on, my man? Yeah, yeah. All right, he's in town for the Palestine Lives Conference that just mm -hmm. happened this weekend. Yep. Shout out to my sister, Harabic Tubman, 100. for making this happen. You know what I'm saying? I had to get Tef Poe on here before he headed out of town. You know, he's here for the conference as well as other business that he's handling. What's going on, my brother? Yeah, I'm chilling. I'm happy to be here. I'm glad you pulled up on me, bro. No doubt, man. Right in front of the Barclays Center. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> Whack ass Barclays Center. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so what's going on? I know you was in town for the Palestine Lives Conference. Uh -huh. Before we get into all of that, I want to get into your how how you started off as an artist. You're from yeah. St. Louis, Missouri. Yeah, I'm from St. Louis, uh, born and raised. Um, I, I was a part of a, a bunch of different music collectives, kind of growing up out there. My older brothers uh, was he always going by Tough Po? Or that? Yeah, yeah, Tough okay. Po or Teflon Poetics. I shortened it, nice, uh, to, just to okay. make it easier to say. So that's what it originally comes from. Yeah, yeah, Teflon Poetics. Yeah, Dope. I was a big Wu Tang fan and shit. Okay, you know, Feral Munch type of cat. Nice. You know, since I wanted a name that was one of them type of names, and then I got to start listening to Jada Kiss and stuff mm. like that, and I'm like, damn, I need a name like that, so. The but it was the the best medium between both worlds for me was shortening the name. Nice. But uh, yeah, man, I was in a bunch of different music collectors out there, and then finally I kind of became a figurehead of my own crew, uh, and we call ourselves FMG, FMG. Foot Clan Music Gurus, Family Music and God. Nice. You know. Um, FMG. Yeah, me Go. and my man uh, Jay Stretch, my brother Rockwell Knuckles, my guy, my guy Fresh. You know, we all pretty much. So are you, you know, I got, to, yeah, nice. So you, you kind of a solo artist now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm a solo artist, but I do group projects, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? So I love to collaborate with people. Uh, I got like an unreleased project with uh, with Rebel Diaz nice. called Multiply. Uh, I got an unreleased project with my brother Black Spade, which we actually finna drive called Preacher in the Trap. Oh. Uh, and then I got a, I, like I said, I love collaborating. So I worked mm -hmm. with this, this this brother from back home named Fresco Kane. We did an unreleased project. In St. Louis? Yeah, he signed mm -hmm. to So So Deaf. He's from East St. Louis. So St. Louis and East St. Louis clicking up and doing some music together is not really something that happens. Okay. So we tried to do that and make a statement. It's like a separation yeah, historically yeah, yeah, for whatever reason. Yeah. And you kind of... Exactly. Nice. And then I got another collabo joint with my man, Indiana Rome. Yeah, I just love working with people who, you know, just mixing it up, mm -hmm. you know? But I got a lot of solo music as well. Were you always politically active and conscious? What I forgot to mention earlier, you're not just a hip hop artist, you were an activist as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know, you know, I got to know about you through the Ferguson protest. I know your fa your family's from Ferguson and mm -hmm. you was you know, you was you, there was an uprising there after yeah, the killing yeah. of Mike Brown. Were you was your music always conscious or did it develop after that uprising or Man, during that or you know, I, I think um my medium is always just to be uh I always wanted to be one of them artists that's kind of like from the 90s, like a Nas or a, a Tupac or, you know, even a Biggie where, where people don't hear the political, you don't immediately hear what's politicized about Biggie's music, mm -hmm. but when you really get into his catalog, it's very, it's actually very political in, in terms of what he's rapping about pertaining to the mm -hmm. immigrant black identity, you know what I'm saying, the black immigrant no identity. Doubt. Yeah. So I, I feel like I'm in that vibe, uh, the subversive Okay. By, where 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 I, I do talk about politics, but at the same time I feel like you know the way I'm coming with it is more digestible for the average person. You know what I'm saying? Because I could find the politics and you walking your dog, the, the politics mm. and you going to pick up your kids. You know what I'm saying? Like I'm I'm more into the motion of life with my shit. Nice. You know what I'm saying? And the politics just happens to be Real spr life sprinkled shit. in there. Well, what, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. Because that's the thing, you know, people, some artists get boxed in as the mm -hmm. conscious artist, the mm -hmm. political artist, and that's annoying sometimes yeah. because you're releasing dope ass hip hop in general. Yeah. You might throw some jewels in there here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You might also have your strictly politically charged yeah, songs. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But and, the, and the thing is, the problem with the conscious rap genre in 2019, if we're being really honest about it, um, a lot of people are scared to be honest about it because. It's, it's, a, it's a taboo subject, you know, you know it's some things you just don't say on camera, you say them off camera, but mm -hmm. a lot of conscious rappers not up to par with their skills musically, mm. like, you know what I mean, like, they may not, and this is what I'm saying, like, that's, the genre itself has started to become a stale, non-creative genre, where people are just getting on stage, preaching to people about social issues, mm. 
but the music ain't even remotely moving them. And then they do some jerk off stuff and leave before the rest of the artists perform. And it's just like, if, if that's the case, I can go rock with some cats that's talking about shooting people all day. Because both of y'all using y'all imagination. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Both of y'all both of y'all creating some stuff out of thin air. Exactly. So I might as well go rock with these cats who at least got a crowd. And who's really reaching the, the, the you know, the community? Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the shooting mm -hmm. crowd that's mm -hmm. reaching the community verbally, at least musically, where they're feeling the vibes compared to somebody who yeah, yeah. is lecturing. Exactly. I feel like it's, that's my task is to be like the Trojan horse. In that in that type of arena, you know what I'm saying? Where musically, I might sound like the cats that's talking about the nonsense, mm, mm. but when you start really listening to me, my music and seeing what I'm about, you're like, yo, this dude is a, the flip side of that coin, you know? So, can you talk a little bit about the Ferguson protest? What I mean, you know, I know you were heavily involved with in yeah, it, yeah, yeah. with the uprising. What got you involved in it? Besides, you know, you're a musician. Mm -hmm. What led you to become like one of the lead activists that kind of, you know, well, speak out against it? Well, I always uh, had. Uh, the desire to be politicized just because you know what I'm saying you 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 when you're young as a kid you start asking yourself certain questions man like okay so why why are we poor why are we living in, in the good in the ghetto you know what I'm saying <laughs> like who, who 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 issued that mandate down to us that said this has to be our destiny you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. so I uh always have asked those questions I've always had a yearning for you know humanity and people just in general to, to live good you know what I'm saying and, and even as a child I, I would be bothered by the fact that folks had to go without so I think it's something that's just been in my blood a lot my father he uh, passed away recently but he was a bit of a, a, a black radical you know what I'm saying and he put a lot of that into us growing up but we didn't realize what it was you know what I'm saying because I didn't spend much time with him because he went to prison and this and that okay but um he, he was always dropping little seeds you know, and I, influence. I think those seeds just mm -hmm. blossomed into what I became in their own type of way through him and my mother, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, I think I've, all, I've always been interested and intrigued by the politics, man, and I think what led me to be out there in Ferguson was just the fact that I knew that neighborhood. You know, I'm not from Ferguson, I'm from Delwood, which is a neighboring neighborhood. Okay. My family moved to Delwood from Pine Lawn, and, um, but Ferguson touches Delwood, mm -hmm. and we interact with Ferguson a lot. And then my mom lives in Ferguson now, like on the same street as the mayor of Ferguson. So wow, okay. that zone is, I'm, I've been in and out of that zone my whole life, you know what I mean? So when, when Mike Brown got killed, uh, I wasn't necessarily responding on some thinking this going to be a, a, a thing, an explosive moment type thing. I was really just out there because it, it happened where my feet have been beating the pavement for so many years, you know? So I, I felt like I would have been a hypocrite to talk all the shit I talk in my music. And then when it's some real live action version of the shit going down, I ain't know where to be found. On the sidelines or whatever. Exactly. Exactly. Man. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you definitely put Ferguson on the map. This police brutality mm -hmm. and, and Black Lives Matter and the activism that rose out of out of the you know the police killing over there really put Ferguson on the map. Maybe mm -hmm. in a you know bad light right, because right, it's you right. know brutality and then poverty and then mm -hmm. the Department of Justice released that yeah, man. the the. the, the, the Thing that basically the city was living off of the black community yeah. by ticketing everybody and harassing the community on more than the white residents, for example. Right, right, right. Did did that activism in Ferguson, in a way, lead you going to Palestine? Because I know you went to Palestine so, a few years later. Yeah, yeah. I went to Palestine actually the next year. We Ferguson wow, popped okay. off 2014. I was I went to Palestine 2015. Nice. Um, what led me to go was a series of things. Uh, for one, a lot of the Palestinian community had been reaching out to us on the ground about what was what we were dealing with with the militarized weapons, mm -hmm. and they were really well versed in what was going on and and what was what. You know, like they were real clear about that. And um, you know, it's it's wild, man, because in times of war, you don't know where you're gonna find your allies and your co-conspirators from. You know what I'm saying? And these is black people in the hood tying for fears around their necks, throwing tear gas back at, at the militarized vehicles. That shit sent a shot around the world. You know, everybody heard that. And it was more so like a, a, a like a welcome back Carter moment. People was kind of welcome, welcoming us as black Americans back to the party, you know, back to the, 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 the resistance party. The worldwide party. revolution. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. So uh, that moment kind of sparked 
some dialogue between us and the Palestinians. And then that's amazing, though. Yeah. My boy uh, Basil Mastery, rest his soul. Um, he was also an activist, though. Uh, big there. time. Uh, Pushing in those streets mm -hmm. out, you know, during the, the uprising. And he was doing like independent journalism oh, as well, yeah, yeah, covering he, the protests, yeah, live yeah, streaming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I stayed with Bassam for a little while. You know what I mean? He stayed in the, we stayed in the same crib. And uh, before I went to Palestine, this dude used to tell me every day, all day about what was going on, right? And St. Louis Palestinians are some intense people. Like they, they real like. <laughs> It's like, damn, man, I get it. You feel me? Like, I, I'm riding with you, bro. I okay, understand what yes. you're saying. You know what I'm saying? No explanation needed. I got it, fam. You, you told me a thousand times. <laughs> I hear you, bro. But he just didn't give a damn every day. I mean, he would wake up just on it, on it, on it. You know what I'm saying? And when I, I told him I was going because a brother named Ahmed from the Dream Defenders, he's a Palestinian brother, mm -hmm. helped found that organization. Yeah, shout out to Dream Defenders, yeah. He, uh... He just knew it was time. He knew he saw what was happening with the two communities mm -hmm. mixing and mingling with the police. Our police go over there to get training and then use those tactics on us. And then the, the government says, well, why y'all going over there to, to see what's going on? And like, your, your soldiers going over there to see what's going on, so why we're not? So that's really what did it for me. Like, y'all, the police can't get training and weapons and tactics mm -hmm. from these people and then tell me I can't go over there and see what's going on. Oh, yeah. So yeah, that you know, so it was Ahmed, Bassam, uh, people like Arabic mm -hmm. that that influenced my uh, my walk with the you know aligning myself with the Palestinian struggle. That's amazing, bro. That you started off in Ferguson protesting, and next thing you know, a year later, mm -hmm. you're in the West Bank, Jerusalem. It I mean, how was? Dog, it was wild. I know the tear gas is you know the same tear gas that's used yeah. is being used worldwide by the same companies and. Who are profiting off of people suffering? Mm -hmm. How, what was your experience out there in Palestine? Man, you know what? It was it was it was easy breezy for me to keep it real. It was it was just like being in the hood, man. You know what I'm saying? I thought it was gonna be crazy. I thought it was gonna be oh my god, you know. But at least in the Palestinian territories, mm -hmm. yeah, it was. We saw some jacked up stuff, no doubt about it. We saw some hard body stuff, no doubt about it. But um, in terms of relating to the people, knowing how to walk through the land, knowing how to move, I felt like I was just in the hood, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? I was just in the Middle East, you know what I'm saying? So-called Middle East. So I felt like I was, you know, back with the people I know. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's dope. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like they was going through the same things. They got the diners, they got bodegas, they mm -hmm. got everything we got in the hood. It's, it's literally the hood over there and behind the wall, you know yep. what I'm saying? <laughs> I know what you're saying, bro. So it's like, I mean, the 24-7 occupation, but people might think there's shit popping up every single second. Yeah, man. People trying to live their life as much as possible. Yeah, but man. Things bubble up and then, you know, exactly. clashes and things like that. It reminded me that we were under occupation in the States because you don't see it so candidly with the... Well, you do see it, but we don't... We Our, our eyes have been um, softened to it. But you see the, the police roaming the hood, all day, every day. You see the, the, uh, the, the armed officers out and about with their straps publicly, you know, like they walking around like they soldiers. You see that same paradigm in the American, paradigm in the American ghettos, you know what I'm saying? And to go over there and see it, it's just army soldiers, but it's the same mentality, mm -hmm. it's the same tactics, it's the same regime, it's the same flow of money, it's the same currency, it's, it's, every, it's the same alignment, you know what I'm saying? So, I, I, that that just made me feel like, damn, you know, for one, I knew Americans was being lied to, but when you go to, go over there, you realize how much you're being lied to. You realize how much manipulation is at, at, at hand, you know what I'm saying? With the news, defending Israel, and, and just giving you that perspective, that, yeah, man. that narrative. I mean, you, you know, interesting you're bringing up the police and the military because we haven't been taught to look at the police like that for mm -hmm. several reasons. but. Mm -hmm. But that is the issue with the discussion of the police. What is their role, really? Right. Are they here to protect the community? Are they here to make money off of the community? Right. Are they here to occupy the community? Right. People aren't able to separate that, especially right. when, you know when you have family members in the you know police force or in the military, it mm -hmm. becomes complicated, and you mm -hmm. want to close your eyes to that reality. Yeah. How can we ch change that paradigm of Man. the police relationship with the community? Like you have the mayor here in, in New York trying to lessen profiling, stop and frisk, even though it's still going on, but they try to do it to a lesser degree. Yeah, they it's got me out here, man. I was going to see my homie in, in the Bronx. 
like a stop. And, uh, they jumped out the car, dog. And, you know, I'm not from here, so I, I'm not used to them type of jump out boys. You know what I'm saying? So the car was still still moving. The boys was in the back. Somebody jumped out the front. You know what I'm saying? I'm thinking I'm finna get uh, jumped down on by some Puerto Rican boys okay. in the Bronx. You know what okay. I'm saying? I'm thinking I'm in the wrong hood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I didn't know what was going on. You feel me? So <laughs> they ran up on me, and it was it was it was kind of laughable because it's like, bro, I'm 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 regionally immune to your interrogation mm. tactics. You understand? Know because I don't yeah. I didn't grow up dealing with y'all mm. like that, so I don't know what you even talking about. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like, I'm just a tourist right now. <laughs> I'm just visiting, damn it. <laughs> but, you know? What were they questioning you? Did they Man, let you they know was asking what? me if I, they basically, I could tell they probably was listening to my conversation because I, I was in a pretty sketchy neighborhood. And uh, I had said something like, man, if I was at the crib, I would probably have the strap on me fucking around over here. I was on the phone. And I was like, if I was at the crib, I probably would have had to be fully loaded coming over here. And I think they heard me say that. Then I turned around and they bust the corner. I, you know what I'm saying? I don't know. They got all types of stuff in the yeah, hood that we don't know about mm. where they probably listening to the convo three, four, five blocks away. You know what I'm saying? Everything's possible, you know what I mean? Like the second I said yeah. that, them boys, whoop. My man was like, my man, why you walk down here and walk back? Because mm -hmm. I'm looking for the address I'm going to, mm -hmm. dog. Mm -hmm. It could very well, you know, sometimes when you get into conspiracy where it's hard to prove these things, but exactly. it's very much possible. Exactly. It doesn't mean it's not possible. Exactly. Or it could have just been they saw a black man walking down the street. They're the police. Right. That their job is to harass the, you know, community. Right. right. And they saw you and they figured, hey. Exactly. It was just my number that just, day. Or they saw you looking around, whatever. They they, they make up all types of excuses to mm -hmm. justify stopping and frisking individuals. Mm -hmm. I'm going to skip it, y'all. Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's some real Brooklyn shit right now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Got tempo in Brooklyn, <laughs> driving around. Yeah, man. To yeah, yeah, you know, avoiding the popo -po right know, now. Dog, trying to listen. Know. <laughs> so, I know you got some projects out. You, you dropped the War Machine one. Yeah, War Machine came out. That that was the first one that started it off a, lot, a couple years ago. Then uh, I did War Machine 2, mm. which a lot of people in St. Louis felt like that was a, a prophetical album. Because on the cover I had uh, I had an illustration of a little kid with a hoodie on, and you got the outline of the body on the floor. So it's a cartoon mm -hmm. illustration, but you got the military in the background. You got money flowing. It looks like I predicted the things to come. You know what I'm saying? But when, honest, did, when did you drop that album? I dropped that maybe 2013, 20, okay. 2012, 2013, something like that. And then 2014, I dropped uh, this joint called Cheer for the Villain, and then I got back onto the war machine train after okay. that. Okay. But, um... And you also got the Black Julian. And I got Black album. Julian 1, Black Julian 2. So those are all mixtapes you would call them? Well, I would call them street albums. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Okay. You know, you can listen to them on, um, uh, Tidal, Spotify, Apple Music, or you can just go to my website. Why'd you title them um, War Machine? Um, it was the space I was in, for one. When I did War Machine 1, I felt like that was the type of mind frame I had to have to make it out of St. Louis, which, you know, we don't have no industry infrastructure there, you know what I'm saying? It's the middle of Missouri. You mean music, music industry? Yeah, yeah you yeah. know, like, there's nothing, I can't, like, like, if, I, I, a lot of times I think if I was an East Coast artist, or, or a West Coast artist, or even a guy from, like, Atlanta, mm -hmm. my mind frame would have been different in terms of how I pitch my music, because I think the, the problem in these markets is that they, you you have examples of people who made it in your face all day, mm -hmm. every day. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We don't really have that. So, the where I was coming from with even trying to pull some out of the water was a little differently, a little different than somebody who, you know, grows up seeing murals and pun or has world foundation. Oh yeah, and, you know, yeah. like this city is known for being no doubt. the mecca. You know, exactly. Yeah, it, you know. It, they, they probably won't fuck with you, but Def Jam is here. You know what I mean? They like they, there's a, it comes with a, it's a different mentality if I, I was going you. in this yeah. shit. It's more of a hope that you can exactly. make it because you can reach out to certain, you know, You go to a party, or, yeah. bump into the right guy, exactly. had a right convo, exactly. whatever, you know? Yeah, yeah. But out there, that's just, you don't have a flying chance of that happening. So it's like, ain't nothing coming to Missouri, man. You know what I mean? So you just really have to figure it out for yourself. And, um, I just looked at the independent cats, you know, the masterpiece, the two shorts, and I just kind of model. Even Nipsey Hustle, man, because I've been a Nipsey fan since like 2006. So 
I just had to model myself mm -hmm. after those types of rappers, you know what I'm saying? And that's really, so the War Machine thing was really, it started off with me thinking that's the mentality I needed to, I got to have a fighter mentality okay. to come out of it. By the second one, I had morphed into a, um, kind of like a, a, a the, the, the hood CNN, you know what I mean? Like the, people relied on me to tell them what was really going on out there, you know? So I kind of turned that into more of a, a it was a, a hip hop slash trap music opus of you know high quality rapping nice. and, okay. and and political stuff. You know, so the beats were a little bit different though. Yeah, you say? well, like you know, I always put mm -hmm. gotta have that bounce in there because of mm -hmm. where I'm from. You know what I'm saying? But I also can get down on the boom bap stuff. You know what I mean? Because it's weird. We grew up listening to like shit like Gucci Man, but we also grew up mm. listening to shit like Jay Dilla. Mm. So, you know, I, I consider myself a person that takes both of them influences and cross mixes. That's them. important, yeah. Because you, you got the you know you got the East Coast cats, you know, with the disgruntled ones. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like yeah. we only want to see East Coast <laughs> for the most part, you know? Yeah, I mean yeah, you know yeah. you get that a lot, but it's, yeah. it's good to be influenced by all yeah, man. regions. Yeah. You had to out there because we looking at this shit like, damn, how they doing it? You know what I'm saying? Like, damn, they doing it like that in New York, dog. We got to do our shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, yeah. they doing it like that in L.A., dog. It's like, so in, in St. Louis, it's, it's weird because you'll have, since, since, since it is in the middle of the country, you'll have people select the region that they personally identify with the most. Okay. So some cats will mm -hmm. be... When you when you meet them, you instantly know like, oh, this dude is into East Coast hip hop. Mm -hmm. Period. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You meet this cat, you like, oh, yeah, you be listening to that, you know, Snoop and them. I mm -hmm. can tell you got that. <laughs> that's what vibration you on. You know what I'm saying? So that's what we grew up in. It was just a mixture of cats. I used to kind of always feel like, you know, cats was posing a little bit. Like, bro, you ain't been nowhere near no New York. Mm -hmm. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> you come up to my yo yo yo. You ain't been nowhere near yeah, no New York, yeah, dog. Yeah. Why do you talk like this? You know what I'm saying? But I get it. It's hip hop. It's it was hip, hip hop yeah. influencing how they was doing their thing. You know what I mean? But it's dope to keep it local and, and authentic to your town. Yeah, even yeah. being influenced by you know different yeah. sounds. Uh, one of the joints on the War Machine is, is a Hillary song. Okay. And that song, that was my shit during the election. Word and up. I want to bring it up because it's election time right now. They they're campaigning already. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. all the Democrats and everything, and they, they want to run against Trump. So the joint Hillary was basically addressing Hillary Clinton. Oh, true that. That, you know. Are you convinced now, after a few years of Trump, are you convinced that Hillary Clinton is the lesser of two evils? Man, that's a layered question, bro. You know what I mean? Because that's the argument we get a lot from the liberals and telling us it's to a layered, vote for her. It's a layered question because you got to... So I'm always talking about from the perspective of people living in poverty. And um, it could be argued that folks living in, in certain adverse conditions really ain't felt no difference in their condition from Trump to Obama to George Bush, in, in all honesty, you know what I mean? And I think it gets deeper than the two-party system. Like, yeah, Trump is, is, is crazy. He's fascism on wheels, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I think... That's fascism on wheels. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? He ready made in order. He microwave faster. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I I do feel like on a certain context, in terms of the Americanized mm -hmm. lifestyle, mm -hmm. like the everyday mechanics of American life, of course Trump is wor worse than Hillary. You feel me? But if we place ourselves in the context of of, of a globalist society that question gets a little bit more difficult to answer, you know what I'm saying? Because I would render that they represent the same philosophies and ideologies in, 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 to a certain kind of extent, you know what I'm saying? But I get it, though. At the same time, the American government, man, to me personally, that's my opinion, mm -hmm. man, I feel that they do this all the time. And it's just a matter of Understanding that it's going to continue to, 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 the heat is going to continue to turn itself up until we get to the point where they have a society rendered the way they want it to be rendered. But right now, the frog is in the frying pan and the frog don't know it's cooking. And they do this bait and switch game where it's like, 
oh, we got this crazy Republican in mm -hmm. here that's mm -hmm. gonna tell women they can't have abortions mm -hmm. and gonna legalize rape and um, want to deport all the motherfucking brown people and he going, you know, he doing trade wars with China. Mm -hmm. uh, oh damn, shouldn't you have voted for Hillary? <laughs> like, right? That's the then, argument I hear. That's exactly the argument I'm hearing. Exactly. exactly. Then he vote for Hillary, and then she lock everybody up. You know what I'm saying? Start a war <laughs> to, you know, not to defend Trump here, but it, what ends up happening with that debate of lesser two evils, and it becomes like whose life is more expendable. It almost yeah. becomes like it's an oppression Olympics. It is an oppression Olympics. It's like okay. Hillary may be better for trans rights and gay rights and things like that, but she yeah. may not be good internationally, for example. Exactly. You know, Trump may not be good for border issues, but it becomes like exactly. whose life is expendable, who isn't, and that's exactly. an it, it kind of we're fighting each other. It comes down to the fact that a lot of people really don't even give a fuck about uh, shit beyond the surface level politics of it. And, and, and that's, that's, and, that, and like, and I know that sounds a bit wild, you know, that's a bit protruding, but it's like, and, and, I'm, and I'm not trying to be one of these people that's pandering for Trump, and, and I'm not trying to be some dude that's stuck on like, yo, I just couldn't vote for Hillary type shit, but a lot of people want folks to erase the damage that we felt. I felt hurt from the Clinton administration, you know what I'm saying, growing up as a kid. Like, like I, I grew up poor, so I, I was a direct directly affected by their policies and, and you know didn't see loved ones for years you know what i'm saying got older you know what i'm saying staying with a, with, a, with, a, with a woman that i'm dating myself the fucking house inspectors from from clinton home housing and shit the, the housing bills and shit coming into the crib telling me i can't be there because me and her ain't married so i got i get kicked mm -hmm. out the crib like a lot of people ain't lived that shit so they don't have no personal animosity towards the clintons and then they go like, they'll be like, well, that wasn't Hillary Clinton. She wasn't even in office when that happened. Like, that's what I get sick. That's the part of it that I get sick of, right? Because we're doing that now with Joe Biden. You know what I mean? Like, so you're going, we, we did, so you're going to separate people who have the same worldview. They represent the same political party, got the same worldview. They, they, they hit the trail and campaign for each other under the hospice of having the same fucking politics. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. they hit the trail with each other because mm -hmm. they, hey, I believe in what she said. I represent exactly. what she said. My exactly. bad, bro. Exactly. You know? They align on like 99% of the time. Of and then they go, yeah. but the voting record is different. Mm -hmm. The philosophy is the same. The ideology is the same. You know? I, I don't know. Did you vote in the last election? Yeah, man, I did. Man. I <laughs> Do you did. mind if I ask who you voted for? I did. I, I, <laughs> Do you I, reveal I, that? I, 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 I didn't vote for Hillary. Okay. I did. Me neither. Right. I didn't vote for Trump either. Though, Me neither. You know I'm, <laughs> so I'm deducing it's Jill Stein. <laughs> yeah, man, I yeah. went Jill Stein on the ass. Yeah. And I wasn't even fucking with. <laughs> I wasn't even fucking with Jill Stein. <laughs> Me neither, bro. I was fucking with the Green Party, you know, and I respect it because of Rosa Clemente and Cynthia McKinney and everything. But I'm not, you know, I'm not. A, I didn't know much about Jill Stein either. But I felt that I want to give a third party a chance. I felt like Jill Stein could have did her thing last election, but she like the Green Party does the same thing they do every time, bro. They do this every election. They wait so late to engage people of color, bro. You know, like people gonna come for me for saying this, but I gotta keep it straight. They're one of the poorly organized national organizations I've ever seen. <laughs> like. That's Hey, they be calling you like the day of Like I got a phone call for somebody in the Green Party The day oh of an God. event Like yo can you come down here And, and uh, do the Hillary song before Jill Stein walks on stage It's going to be televised on CNN tonight woo, 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 woo. Motherfucker Why haven't I been in dialogue exactly. with y'all Before you want me to hop up here for mm -hmm. a television op You know what I mean and, and I'm not thirsty for the attention So the average rapper would have went down there and been like Hell yeah I'm going to do that shit No I'm not doing that shit I'm not letting y'all motherfucking use my platform Use my energy mm -hmm. to half-ass endorse some shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, if we gonna do some shit, let's be intentional, let's be impactful, exactly. and let's really ride. You know? To be effective, to be truly effective. Exactly. Yeah. Let's yeah. move the needle, man. Let's just not. I'm not here for the political theater. You know? That's crazy. You said. That. I hope some of the Green Party's operatives are watching this and you know try to change things for the better. You know? Because it has potential. Yeah. The Green Party has potential. Maybe locally it'd be better than, you know, not, you know, nationally. Yeah, like even with the local chapters, you don't be hearing nothing from them. I don't know where the local chapter of the Green Party is at I don't, yo, in my town, either. man. I don't even know. I'm in New York and I don't even know either, yo. I barely see them, you know. <laughs> That's just the truth. 
But okay, I mean, you're, you're in New York now for the Palestine Lives Conference, organized yeah. by Existence is Resistance. Again, shout out to my sister, Harrah Big Tubman. Right. Uh, also within our lifetime, you know, the young activists and everything. Yeah, yeah. Uh, put it together, an amazing conference this weekend. It's the second annual. Can you tell us what it was like to speak and perform? Mm -hmm. I saw the picture you posted with Sekou Odinga, yeah. political, former political prisoner, revolutionary freedom fighter, watching you perform. What yeah. was that feeling like, man? Nah, it's crazy, man, because, uh, you know, people like him ain't finna really hang around and, and watch nothing that they ain't feeling is solid. And uh, so, but at the same time, I was, uh, I, was, I, was, I, was, I saw him out the corner of my eye and I'm like, damn, bro, you know, I'm kind of wild on stage. I don't want to, you know, push, Disrespect the, OG. push the elder back, like, <laughs> make the you. elder be like, yo, this is a wild boy right here. <laughs> Who y'all got up in here? But, uh... <laughs> The thing is, uh, you know, when you're on stage, you can only be yourself, man. I'm the best performances when you just be yourself. But um, I talked to him the next day at the uh, after I did the panel about Black and the Holy Land, and uh, he was cool. He was like, "Man, your flow kind of remind me of the brothers back in the day." You know, it's like the whole vibe remind me of the, the brothers back in the day. That's so awesome. Man. I took That's that as amazing. a big compliment. Was, you know? yeah. <laughs> Huge compliment. And um, for me, that whole experience, the whole uh, existence is resistance crew, and the whole Palestine lives, I mean lives uh, conference, is necessary work. You know what I'm saying because it, it brings factions of that movement into the same space that mm -hmm. typically wouldn't be in the same space. You know, like even for me as a as a Black American, you know what I'm saying to be in that room with with the, with the Arab brothers and sisters and you know building like that. You know, I don't take it for granted because. That's my vision of what it takes to get this shit done. Is us working across the line with each other and building an actual coalition of different forces, you know. And um, also for me, it's like my boy Bassam Mastery, with him being deceased now, it's like he was so about the Black and Palestine alignment that uh, anytime I'm doing that work, I'm really just standing in the gap for him. I'm just. Uh, doing something that he would have did that he get, he ain't here to do. You know what I mean? So I'm just you're honoring him in a way. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like I'm just if 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 the revolutionary go on the ground and what they about go on the ground with him, then it, you know what purpose does that serve? So it's like he he beat us over the head with you know what was the occupation and information about it and stuff like that. So it would be just disrespectful to his legacy to, for him to be dead and we'd be like, alright, I'm cool on that. So you spoke on a panel, Black in the Holy Land. Yeah. That's a documentary we were working on with Mark Lamont Hill and mm -hmm. Stacey Muhammad. Mm -hmm. Nancy went out to Palestine, did a whole bunch of interviews, and you know went to the different black neighborhoods in Palestine, mm -hmm. Afro-Palestinian, as well as some of the refugees and some yeah, of the migrants. Yeah, I saw the clip. It was the, the trailer was crazy. Yeah, you know, the trailer is crazy. Stacey Muhammad and Mark Lamont Hill did their thing with that. I'm so excited for it. So what was the panel about? What was you really talking about on Yo, the panel? Yo, so for me, man, this is important because a lot of people ignorantly don't know that it's black communities in Palestine that have been in Palestine a very, very long time. You know, some of them outnumber any of the other communities that have been there in terms of how long they've been there. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> they, I didn't really understand that they got different identities amongst them. You got Afro-Palestinian, you got people who claim this, people mm -hmm. who claim that, mm -hmm. people who don't feel they Palestinian at all, people who don't feel they African at all. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. It's all types of different shit. You got Ethiopian Jews, you got mm -hmm. this, you got that. You know, it's, it's on an educational level alone, it's interesting. You know, in terms of just learning new information mm -hmm. about new cultures, it's just interesting. Then on top of that, when you slap the whole occupation piece on there, and you look at how the Israeli government wants people to assume that this is a, a, a conflict between them and a group of uh, extremist Muslim Arabs that just want to, you know, rid them off the face of the mm -hmm. earth. For, them, for You know what I mean? Like, it, it, the, the narrative gets so twisted and misconstrued that even black people start to uh, enforce that narrative. Mm. You know what I mean? If we ain't careful, it's a lot of people that do. So... I think it's important. I, I love the fact that, that y'all are doing that, that piece about the fact that there are black people in the Holy Land, there are black people in the Palestinian territories, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? And that changes the conversation for a lot of these people that want to boldly proclaim that they're doing the work for black lives, 
but don't have no international context where they work. Uh, on the line with international communities, aren't doing the work to get educated about international communities, and also, you know, are very hands off pertaining to Palestine. And it's like, for one, even without the black Palestinians being mm -hmm. there, that's still my people. You feel me? Because gotcha. it's still a part of the diaspora. We still, we're all diasporic people at this point, especially due to the imperialism and due to the colonization of the world under the, under the banner of white supremacy. People of color, we all from the fucking diaspora at this point, man. We all, then, I'm, I'm sure we do our DNA. We got a little bit of everything in our shit at this point due to the, the way this has went down. You know what I mean? So... <clears throat> And also to know that that's how they played the game. They would show up to certain villages when they snatched the slaves. And you had indigenous folk who looked African, but were actually indigenous and had been there already, but they look African. They, they don't know shit about Africa, but they've been in that land for thousands and thousands of years mm -hmm. with the rest of the indigenous folk, mm -hmm. right? White man show up and say, yo, you look like you are African. You a slave, homie. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You on the plantation with African mm -hmm. slaves. Ain't never seen Africa. Don't speak their language. Don't not a part of their culture. None of that. You feel what I'm saying? And through the lineage, you you just get socialized black. You get socialized African, right? And three three hundred years later, somebody do their DNA and be like, yo, you know I got what's the name of my mm -hmm. blood? That's because mm -hmm. you had a dark skinned ancestor that the fucking white man thought was an African. Mm -hmm and sold him into slavery because he could get away with it. You know what I'm saying? That like, is interesting. It's yeah, a demented yeah, game, yeah. you feel me? But we don't even break it down like that. We don't even begin to break it down like that. So that's why that's important because we that's that's breaking it down. Mm -hmm. That's revealing that the whole history is a lie. From like the, the whole concept of how they're coming at it and educating you about who you are is a absolute lie. So we separate ourselves not knowing we already been intertwined. Mm. You know what I mean? That's them that came mm -hmm. with the separation. We didn't do that. We were already in line. We have our ancestors with the same religions, mm -hmm. same rituals. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We, they might have had a couple little wars where all right, this year we this for a couple little hundred years we rule yeah, in a couple little hundred exactly. years we rule and eventually all that culture mm -hmm. gets mixed up into a fucking gumbo of its own and the, the person that was late to the party was the European. That is very true. Yeah, man. I mean, people should check out the, you know, the trailer for the documentary, Black and the Holy Land. It's on YouTube right now. So let's go back to music. Mm -hmm. What you working on now? I know you, you have a deal with Tommy Boy currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that an official deal? Yeah, with, yeah. With... It's, um, it's more of a merger between okay. you know, or a, vent, uh, a joint venture. Nice. Uh, but it's, it's a record deal, but it's a, it's a joint venture in terms of how we do the business. Um, with my imprint, which is the FMG imprint. The FMG, yeah. And then uh, with Tommy Boy, uh, my man Brian Delaney up there is the a &R. Uh The president is Rosie. She's a real good, powerful woman. Uh, Tom Silverman, he's still running the label. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't had really no bad no bad experiences. I was going to bring that up because I'm sure a lot of people are hitting you up. Yeah, like, yeah, yo, yeah, definitely. Tough. De La Soul, yeah, what yeah, happened yeah, yeah, with yeah. the catalog and everything. Man, I'm going to be, <laughs> you know, this is a real deal spill, baby. We, this is hot off the presses. You're the first person I ever did an interview Exclusive about Exclusive with Tef Poe, yeah. So, I'm going to keep, a, I'm going to call a spade a spade, bro. De La Soul ain't get Tef Poe out the hood. You know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect to De La Soul. You know what I'm saying? I love De La Soul, but... I would have still been in the hood ducking bullets if it, if, if it, if it was De La Soul call. You know what I'm saying? So. <laughs> oh, my God. That's just real talk. You know what I mean? <laughs> I run up on any of them brothers out there show with any type of, hey, yo, I do this, do it. Cool. You keep doing it. You know what I'm saying? And that's no disrespect. They Understood. legends. But Understood. that's just the real deal about it, man. You know what I'm saying? So, like. You know, I went up to the label yesterday to rap with him about some things and stuff like that. And um, my thing is, my my deal ain't they deal. You know what I'm saying? Like, gotcha. and okay. and we came. And, and my whole situation with us is, we always try to come into any business situation, uh, making it equitable for both sides. Mm -hmm. and, and very seldom will I get involved in something on the business tip that isn't well rounded, like. You barely can get me to show up to some shit if it ain't well rounded, mm. you know. Like, cause I'm big on equity. If you got a bad reputation or something, you mean? 
bad reputation uh -huh. or just uh, I try not to let the reputation shit influence my decision mm -hmm. because the wh whatever you had going on with X Y Z, who knows? I don't know that how that relationship and, unraveled mm -hmm, itself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And if I made decisions based on that, then I probably wouldn't do much of anything. You know, because everybody got a in the music biz, everybody got a bad story about such and Some such, such and such, such yeah. and such. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. So you really have to make decisions for yourself. It's not a game where you can go. Uh, that person down the street don't mm -hmm. fuck with them, so I can't fuck mm -hmm. with them. Like you can't do that in the music biz. You'll be stuck on square one. No, understood. So with that situation, man, it's it's an independent label. It's an independent deal. We are independent label as well. And so they're gonna be the distributor, or what's or yeah, yeah, basically, man, basically, mm -hmm. they, and 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 we, it, it's a it, they they are my distributor, mm -hmm. but it's also more of a. I'm gonna be honest. It's a family. I feel a, a, a family type of energy when I go up there. You know what I mean? Like I can go up there any time of day. Like if I'm in New York, it's like, yo, I'm in town. Yeah, come through. I pull up. I'm sitting in the office with, with the A&R and R when we having real conversations. You know what I'm saying? And also, I recognize how hard dude works. He a family man, stay in the Bronx, you know? Mm -hmm. And I just recognize hard work when I see it. You know, like, I pray that they get whatever they got to work out with De La Soul mm -hmm. worked out because an honest at reason why I did sign with them was because it was conversations about them getting their catalog back, being able to release some of the older music. And, you so know, that came up in some of the negotiations? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. And I definitely wanted to be a, attached to that classic type of legacy, you know what I'm saying, and be able to contri contribute to that type of zeitgeist of mm -hmm. Classic shit, you know no, what I'm saying? No. I wanted to be pegged in between them type of rappers, you know, the De La Souls and the, the Digital Undergrounds and, the, you know, the Royce the Five Nines mm -hmm. and the, the people that they had on there in the past, you know what I'm saying? I wanted to be a part of that. So you just inked the deal? Well, we signed mm -hmm. with them last uh, last June. Okay. Um, but I've been writing the book, Rebel to America, so I haven't really... So it's going to be separate from the music. Yeah, It's yeah. not involved with, mm -hmm. with the music. And I want to talk about that. Yeah. Back to mm -hmm. Tommy Boy. Mm -hmm. What about your content? You're, mm -hmm. you're somewhat, you know, you are controversial. Mm -hmm. You can be mm -hmm. when you know when you want to be. Mm -hmm. You've had music that's that's politically charged mm -hmm. and or just you know in general that can't be considered controversial. Let's yeah. say. Was there any issue with the label? Crazy so part is, man, Tommy Boy. If you know the history of them, they don't really like to fuck with safe shit. Like. They deliberately go look for the unsafe stuff. Mm -hmm. So that's how they kind of, we, we started to even begin getting relationship is they, they they weren't looking for the the, the 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 safe to package artists, you know? And I and I, I think it was really clear going into our situation, what that was going, that, that that's what I'm on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? <laughs> the half time I've heard of Tough Paul, I mean, they know what you was involved in, you know? Yeah, that's outspoken, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Going into it, you know, I'm a wild boy, man. You know, some things, some may sway in the media, and I mean, you don't know what I'm gonna do. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm gonna do. You know, so uh, the thing that I've been surprised about the most is, and I'm not caping for the label because all labels have things that you disagree with. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's any anytime you're in a label situation, it's it's complicated because you're no longer just an artist balling on your own mm -hmm. and, and making decisions on your own you do have a, a infrastructure of folks to talk to now but um the thing i can say about them is that they haven't pushed me to change nothing about my message if anything i'll send them some shit and they'll be like bro you gotta go go at their head a little harder you know what i'm saying we would you we feel like you watering it down for our sake you know what i'm saying like that's crazy. So, you yeah. know, bring the heat if you're going to bring the heat, man. You know what I mean? If you're going to do it, do it. Mm -hmm. So, that's what I've experienced. Uh, my hardest complication with, with, with the label relationship, to be fully transparent, is the fact that I have been making so many of my own primary decisions for so long that now that there, there there are people to run these things by, there's, there's people who have, they, they've they released music on a broader level than I have, you know what I'm saying? So they know mm -hmm. uh, different things about the, the, the reach of songs and um, what it takes for a record to go from here to this many people hearing exactly. it. Yeah. 
and th that has been a process that for me has been um it's been a trying process to be honest with you uh because uh a lot of times when i make my music i make it you know i'm dropping you neat right there when the shit happened if i'm rapping about one of the homeboys getting shot they probably just got shot you know like there's very few things mm -hmm. in my music that's imagination oriented you know what i'm saying like i'm 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 not pulling shit out of thin air mm -hmm. like we in Avengers and just making a Tesseract. Like, I'm I'm really, this concrete music. This is what's going on. This high is going on. You know, shorty down the block mm -hmm. giving head for 35 mm -hmm. bucks to pay her light bill. You know what I'm saying? Like, dude up here selling his soul for a pair of sneakers. You know what I mean? Like, the, his the cats in the home with, with a home studio. Somebody kicked the door in thinking they had more stuff in there than they had in there. And it's just a little humble home studio now they on the ground getting robbed like it's real shit that happened um it's really what's going yeah, on you know yeah, what i'm saying good, yeah. so i can't it's hard to edit that for the sake of like well if you say it differently mm -hmm. sometimes i don't know how to say it differently because this is what happened mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i mean so that's that's where you know what i'm saying I'm, i'm trying to to learn to even better myself as an MC, and i think the average artist would, would, would hear some critiques like that and, and feel the need to become reclusive and oh fuck y'all y'all want me to you know what i mean mm -hmm. but i think it's uh that's how you do become one of those guys that's how you become a dmx that's how you become that's what a nipsey hustle is he's a guy that that figured out how to take that same shit mm -hmm. and make it translatable to the public you know what i mean make the public understand like yo this is what's going on some of my subject matter sounds similar to some of the shit y'all used to hear but I actually got a different plan and a different... And to reach a wider audience. I mean, nothing's wrong with reaching a bigger audience. Sometimes yeah. people feel that when one of their favorite underground artists, for example, yeah. reaches a, a you know a larger platform, yeah, yeah. they're selling out, or it's yeah. not the same, they're watering down, et cetera, yeah. et cetera. But that's not necessarily yeah. the case. Yeah, At least man. not anymore in the hip-hop industry. Nah, man, and that's what I want to be, man. You know, to keep it real, I want to be authentically what I am. I want to be able to come out here in New York, still fuck with people like you, still fuck with people like Harabic, still be myself but also be able to be the dude that that you know like i am reaching a broader amount of people with what i'm doing you know what i'm saying like i'm not gonna lie i, I mm -hmm. do want that and i'm not saying it for the money no no I and i'm not saying yeah. it for the fame because yeah. those things is actually things that i'm uh a little less less uh prone to lean into but i understand that um in this climate man you need a cat that can we need some mcs that are finna go behind enemy lines and get busy. We need those hallmark rappers that got some fucking backbone, you know what I mean? Like, I'm looking for where they at. <laughs> and then I'm looking in the mirror like, dog, you one of them. You just gotta put this puzzle piece together mm -hmm. and, and really lay it down, you know? So your next, I know you're working on this book, but is your next album gonna be in this collaboration with Tommy Boy? Yeah, so the next full length Tef Po album, it'll probably be an EP. Through Tommy Boy, mm -hmm. man, I got thousands of unreleased songs. If I'm being real with y'all, mm -hmm. um, I've been just taking my time with the music and, and just getting it, getting it real right. Uh, the next shit is gonna be crazy. I got some unreleased shit with Gangsta Boo from Three Six Mafia. Uh, I got and, 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 and that that song gonna shock the hell out of people because we kind of going in on Trump. You know what I'm saying? And that's most likely gonna be on the EP. You're yeah, saying? definitely, okay. definitely, okay. definitely. That's produced by my man Duke Rellington, who I've been working with for a while. Uh, then I got a joint with uh, Project Pat. I'm still trying to figure out what we doing with that. Uh, if I'm gonna put it on there or not. Mm -hmm. uh, and then I just got an assortment of just solo, dope solo tracks. I've been working with different types of producers. I worked with uh, DJ Payne one. He did a lot of stuff for uh, 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 like Schoolboy Q, 50 Cent. Nice. Um, I mean, you name him, he probably mm -hmm. even worked with him. Mm -hmm. You know, he's a sick, sick, sick producer. Uh, and then I got some unreleased stuff with from uh, the, the young homie, uh, Chase the Money. He's from St. Louis, but he's kind of blowing, he's blowing the fuck up right now. Uh, so it's hard to even get, get in contact with him okay. like these days. He in a whole nother stratosphere of existence right now. But we we got some music that's unreleased together. And um, I'm hoping to put some of that on the EP as well. So 
you're an artist, activist, and now we can call you an author. Yeah. This book coming out. Yeah, yeah. What's the name of the book you said? Uh, Rebel to America. Rebel to America. Yeah. What's what inspired you to write the book? Man, you know Malcolm X, man. You know, um, back in the in the heat of the Ferguson situation, I had so much PTSD that I didn't even know. I really didn't even know if I was gonna be alive. That's how I felt. You know, I felt under that much pressure, and I don't even know where the pressure was coming from most of the time. It was it was just a pressure-filled situation, man. And then a couple of little homies uh, ended up getting killed or locked up. You know, rest in peace to my man, Darren Seals. And um, I really don't talk about that a lot, but his death really played a toll on my, my mental. And um, it took me to a different space. So I started writing a lot just because I felt like damn, man, I got a story to tell. I, I do feel like I got something to contribute mm -hmm. to the world. And, you know, I just wanted, want them to be able to hear it. You see what I'm about on a deeper level and process it. You know so what I'm saying? So can we call it an autobiography? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, it's not going to be the whole story, but it's going to be as much of it as I can put into what, it, what I'm writing. And it talks about basically how uh, my journey been a wild one that you probably wouldn't expect, man. I, I used to live in Knoxville, Tennessee. I worked at this uh, nuclear plant. What? <laughs> what? Same plant where they built the uh, the nuclear. They tested a couple bombs and atomic bombs and shit. The Manhattan Project was originated there, called Y12. Is in Oak Ridge, Tennessee. Uh, that's good. okay. I had no uh, idea yeah. about that. Yeah, yeah man, it's crazy because I went to see Tom Silverman at the label yesterday, mm -hmm. and he was like, I told him about that. He was like, So you worked at the legendary Y12 plant? He's like, Man, you crazy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> but you know, he wanted a few people I've said that to that knew exactly mm -hmm. what it was. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, I used to work down there, man. You know what I'm saying? Um, I got into some situations when I was young where I had to leave the city, leave St. Louis. And I went off the grid for a couple years, basically, which is living down south. And then I found myself in uh, San Diego mm -hmm. living for a while. Okay. And then. Um, I was just, well, I just snapped out of it, like, all right, go back to the crib and do this music thing, you know, really put, I felt like I could have, I saw my boys doing their thing, like, really turning up, you know, I was like, damn, man, they got it popping, so I need to go home and, be, you know, be a soldier in that army, so I just, I left, got a Greyhound ticket from California back to St. Louis, man, got off that train, got off the bus, clicked on my homeboy Nate, and we just went at it, you know what I mean, straight up. <laughs> When is this? When is this book uh, it's supposed gonna, to be released? It's going to drop in the spring. Okay. I'm gonna do a soundtrack with it. Spring of 2020. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna do a soundtrack with that boy. It's gonna be hard. That's it's crazy. It's you gonna do be a soundtrack so with that whole oh, album. Yeah. Oh yeah. Called oh, Rebel yeah. to America too. Oh yeah. Too? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. It's gonna be some of the most unique shit that people have ever encountered. Yeah, I'm gonna tell you that right now because. A lot of these people writing these books, we gonna. I feel this, and I, I don't like making bold proclamations that don't have nowhere for me to land them. So anytime I do this, that means I really feel convicted about what I'm about to say. But I, I feel that this book, if we do it right, when we do it right, mm -hmm. we bring the music component, and we bring the authenticity of my life story into the fold, it's gonna change the way that a lot of these people are writing these books about similar subjects because they're 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 not giving you a book they're giving you I'm picking up people's books and it's got shit that I said in there out of context it's it's got quotes in there that you know like yeah I said that but did I say that necessarily for you to get a mm -hmm. fucking uh, six figure book deal off of it? Nah, I did not. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I did not put that into the, the mm -hmm. ether for you to grab and fucking get paid off of. You know what I'm saying? But, and then on top of that, these is motherfuckers that never even been to the slums. You know what I mean? Never, you don't Capital know. That, but capitalizing on, come on stories man. or books. Yeah. Come on, they ain't, they ain't drove mm -hmm. down. They don't know nothing about nothing we going through for real. You know what I mean? They, they, they don't know what that darkness really look like. You know what I'm saying? You ain't been depressed mm -hmm. because you ain't felt like damn how am i gonna get my hopes and my dreams out uh, in this world like in in this coming from this mm -hmm. how the fuck is anybody gonna know i exist mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what i'm saying you ain't felt that pressure right but you writing 
our narratives and you and you and you want to come stand next mm-hmm. to the to the realness to get a whiff mm-hmm. of it so you know what I'm saying so you can get a a, 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 a authentic yeah. pass for the day a real exactly. nigga pass for the day you know mm-hmm. what I mean like you get your pass for the day and it's like man honestly I feel like 2020 moving forward when we drop this new music with the with the Tommy Boy situation we drop this album we drop this book we really get get our, our footing back firm after I finish writing this thing mm-hmm. I think we're gonna like really shake up this energy man I really believe that that's dope, man. Looking yeah. forward to it. Looking forward. You you working like crazy, Tef. Yeah, dog. <laughs> so before we get into the freestyle session, where can people check you out? Your music, your IG page. Yeah, or... man. Um, tefpo.com. Um, that's T E F P O E. T E F P O E dot com. I got all my albums up there for free that you can listen to. All my mixtapes, you can listen to them. I got freestyle tapes. I got uh, original music. And the thing is about my music is, man, I didn't wait to have a career. You know what I mean? Like a lot, of, and that's my message to a lot of the artists, bro. Don't wait to do your thing thinking, oh, I need this thing, I need that thing, I need that thing. Man, I, I just put the music out at the time with what I had at the time. And I never stopped. You know what I mean? And <clears throat> that walked me into where I'm at now, where I can, where I'm at a realistic point where we can begin to make something out of it. Mm-hmm. But if I would have waited on fools, I wouldn't have never got points on the board. So when you listen to my, my catalog, you are gonna hear the growth in me from as a as a young dude who wanted to rap, didn't know what he was doing, until now I'm a grown ass man with a vision and some plans that I'm unraveling. And it, t- it takes time to become that. You don't, you're not gonna be instantly born the boss Don. Like you gotta, you gotta you gotta play the game. You gotta you gotta take the L's. You gotta take the the learning curves. You know what I'm saying? And you gotta listen to the critics and take what people say and say, okay, people not feeling me when I come like that. They don't like these types of beats. They don't they they don't like this type of flow. The hook was weak on that. That bar was unnecessary. Like just different shit like that. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'm never gonna cut myself off from receiving that from the public because the public ain't necessarily trying to give you nothing bad. They're only saying these things because they are supporting you. They they telling you where you need to go to hit the pockets that you need to hit. So when I take that information and, and use it, you know, and I think that's that's helped me immensely in my journey. So I'm just saying that. So when you do go back and listen to the music, you are gonna hear uh, there are tracks where I was less who I am today. <laughs> you okay. know what I mean? There are tracks where you, you, but you, but this is really real time shit. So you're walking into what me even maturing by listening to the music. Mm-hmm. You, you can hear the growth, exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. That's dope, tefpo.com. Uh, yeah, so tefpo.com, and then of course all the streamers, um, Instagram. You said it's all free. Can somebody purchase the album? Is yeah, that you can get that... them off the streamers and purchase okay. if you want. You okay. can purchase off iTunes. You can purchase off the titles. You can purchase on the internet, period, if you want. Mm-hmm. But if you just want to check it out and see what I'm about, check it out. You know what I mean? Give it a listen. If you like it, buy the shit. Exactly. All right, motherfuckers? Don't be cheap. Word. Especially if you claim you're an underground or real hip-hop fan. Yeah, Put man. some money where your mouth is, motherfucker. All right, I'm going to stop right here. Just make sure the camera's out before we yeah, get to yeah. the freestyle. But yeah, also, I'm going to yeah. say one more thing. Um entrepreneurship man um i got a couple businesses back home small businesses but nonetheless we trying to um what kind of business can you make? uh we own a barbershop nice okay. and we own um a bar out by the airport and we're actually at, at war with the city right now to keep our bar because they they uh put a lot of pressure on us because it's three young black dudes that own it and they always think we're doing something illegal but it's completely legal mm-hmm. it's just completely us just doing we ain't doing nothing we ain't supposed to be doing it's straight positive and uh i just want to say you know that's why it's important that we support each other's businesses man because like you know we are under attack for no fucking reason a lot and just support our shit man for real no doubt man thank you tough boy i'm just make sure everything's good with the cameras all right One freestyle more. drive i'm lebanese ether again i got special guest tough po yeah. from st louis missouri he's in the car with me we're in brooklyn right now we made it happen before he heads out of town he's handling some business basically yes yes and uh we're about to get into the freestyle session again check out his website tefpo.com Bandcamp, you can find your music all the yep. streaming platforms yep. title yep. everything make sure you check it out and support that real hip-hop all right my brother you ready yeah let's do it 
tough pole. All right, I'm gonna really free. This is gonna be really off the dome, so don't don't be critiquing it too hard, cause y'all don't even freestyle no more. Check it, yo. Um, uh, I yeah, yo, check it, check it, yeah. Uh, for further glory, I came from the state of Missouri. Life is like hell, this is purgatory. Trying to navigate it like an automobile. Pistols in our hand, that shit was cold steel, for real. Living in the trenches of hell, uh. Tell the motherfuckers vote for Wesley Bell, like yeah. Maybe a prosecutor gon' get us out. I think about it, zipping on this Guinness stout. I read the book of Guinnesses and then diminish this. I feel like I came here to replenish this. The planet that is, goddammit that is. I'm back from the dead, handling biz, yeah. Motherfuckers wonder why I took it. Swerving in the rain through the streets of Brooklyn. Look it. Send me down to Central Booking. It's black power to the day, yeah. To the day of my demise. I had to strategize with a valid mind, uh. I'm trying to bring a pipe bomb into Palestine. And let that bitch unwind and blast that net in Yahoo. Y'all know how I do. Let's get it bloody in this motherfucker. Like my name was Master Shredder, harass whoever. Came back, so I surpassed the level. It's time to unmask the devil, huh? P-O-E, that stand for power over everything. When the guillotine swing, uh. Sky hook like my name is Kareem, that's my government. Motherfucker still loving it, uh. I'm going rogue like the X-Men. My ex-girl see how I'm next man. But I told her we can't go back. This ain't back in the... <laughs> Tough phone! Hold on, man, I gotta get back all that. I gotta get back yeah. all that. I ain't going uh, in. I'm just loosening up. With the free. <laughs> I dropped the joint. Hold on. Oh, you dropped the joint? There it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we back at it. Freestyle drive. Tough pull. Freestyle drive with my man Lebanese Ether in this bitch. Let's do it. Freestyle drive, got my man Tough Poe. Yo. Uh, I see it clearly, we reinvented the glass window. Powered up like a motherfucking battery. I'm about as different as the alien's anatomy. The abnormal genius, my penis is a Gatling. I'm throwing gang signs at Hitler, I'm time traveling. My mind is behaving more talented than Justin Bieber. These combines combine Christ and our lives, now believers. Whoa, how they sound trying to jam me? Drive-bys in a motherfucking Camry, uh. Throwing signs up that's for the family Like, goddamn we, they don't understand me I'm from the brinks of insanity Where they killing your own kind just a vanity I had to survive that shit that made a man of me But came back and said that bullshit candidly Like, what the fuck nigga, this ain't no bullshit I fly a plane into your building just to kill the children And resurrect myself like the fucking pilgrims It's real life, y'all gotta respect the way I'm living I came from nothing but made something out of it I came from something but nothing was about it I came from something and then I rerouted. I came from hell and then I'm still shouting. Yo, motherfuckers equip me. And my own city niggas wanna do me like they did Nipsey. But I can't let it go down like that. That's a setup. Matter of fact, your ass will get wet up. Uh, never trust the 5 0, cause 5 0. Never trust the police, nigga, I know. Never trust the religion, it's not the Bible. Now, in fact, that shit is not reliable. Ooh, motherfuckers lying on theyself and they own music. So, what the fuck is that? I'm here for the equity, I need wealth and health I gotta protect myself, I come from Where you don't come from, I come from What you couldn't imagine, I come from Shit you couldn't even fathom Seeing your best friend resting in peace In a casket like, goddamn If he wouldn't have went to work That motherfucker would be still alive But that's the cost of working for a plantation Or for a nine to five Gotta watch your mind, gotta watch your vibes Gotta watch your tribe, gotta watch yourself Pray for your children, then you multiply your wealth yeah, I went Muslim cause I got people that was on the boat saying I'm doing live when they came here in the fucking shackles. What happened nigga? Throw a plane through Manhattan nigga. Make the whole shit flatten nigga. And then we ride across the fucking river. It's me and Lebanese E in a speedboat with two Uzis what you need for. Yeah. Shooting at the motherfucking police. I feel like the new Robert Horry for fallen glory. Uh, Golden State ain't the only warriors in this shit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yo, I stopped smoking so much as I used to 
But sometimes I gotta hit the joint just to let the devil know that I'm still here to rebuke you. What you do for your own kind says a lot about your manhood when you shine. What you do for your children say a lot about the world we live in and how you hope to make provisions. Wow. Tough oh, <laughs> tough motherfucking po. <laughs> Brooklyn right now, yeah, shit. Man, we Dropping really, that St. Louis energy right we here. We just getting yo. loose, man. We just getting a little shit, loose, man. He shit. got me free, and I don't really even be that doing this no more. Dope, man. Gonna put the AC on a little bit. It's getting hot in here. <laughs> <laughs> Tefo doing his thing. You down for one more? Yeah, I'm down for it. We can keep him going, man. Right. I just, I ain't even really hit the stride that I can right. hit yet. So I'm trying to find it. You know what I'm saying? No doubt, no doubt. I got more beats for you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm like tough pose in the city. Got to get him on the show before he heads out. Hell you know? yeah, like, man. Shit. Even if you want to save some of these boys and just. They stay yours, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They yours to do what you're going to do with them. No doubt, no doubt. Also, shout out to my boy Jabbar. I know you got a joint Jabbar with him. Jabbar, my dog, man. Yeah, That's Jabbar's a good dude, man. good dude. I, I got a lot of respect for Jabbar, That's man. my brother right there, all right? Make sure he, he's probably going to drop that joint soon. All right, we're going to drop another one right now. Tef Po, exclusive on Freestyle Drive. Let's go. Oh. Uh. I go to jail, I tell my, tell my girl take a million and double that shit like Gucci. It's what the shit shows me. This shit feel like Karma Sutra. I'm from the future where people use their mind brains to maintain. And some of us don't even got a gang bang. Retaliation for those that used to stand on the corner and slay cane. Now what is this? You break it down. It's mathematics. How they take two rocks and double it up and tell you to crack addicts. It's mathematics when they take a black man, put him inside a prison and make provisions for the life he living. It's mathematics when they tell the Mexican he can't come into their own shit that these people fucking built. It's mathematics when they go to Palestine and build a wall around the people and call it Israel. Now what's real? You niggas ain't real. Y'all scared to say the shit I say. But I give a fuck about your payday. I'm from where bombs drop like Mayday. And then we roll around and say that it's the heyday, but Dre Day, my payday, make me something that's gruesome. I come from the motherfucking future, that's extra storage. Y'all gotta watch out, that's extra porridge. Y'all rhymes got a lot of science, but they extra boring. Uh, from Carroll City to the streets of Brooklyn, that's where the fuck I took it. The same pathway that Biggie Smalls used to walk. Same projects that made Jay-Z King of New York The same city that made Snoop Dogg The opposition when he knocked the buildings down How you feeling now? Y'all niggas still clowns How you consuming? Me and my man getting high rolling down Union That's the footage though Y'all still killing me My cyclery might be something that you cannot repeat I'm sipping on bomb waters Like Farrakhan's daughter Y'all niggas ain't never seen the Serengeti slaughter A St. Louis nigga where my nuts hang a young Midwest boy should have been in Wu-Tang, but Ooh, yes. shit ain't work like that in my favor, so I made my own and came back as the street savior, um, the sweet flavor, I like the savior, gotta watch my behavior, I fear no man with a handgun, in my city I'm like Tupac mixed with Cameron, that's how much floss I got, Dipset mixed with Outlaws, God, and I freestyle without God. flaws, you walking around without draws, I can't do that, <laughs> I'm from where, you gotta watch your back and watch your front. That's all it is to it, that time in the month Like bone thugs, when I get them on drugs Which one of y'all gon' buzz when I spit it like that? Cause it's like, I can slow it down in double time I blow it up and then I double mine A violent mind, yeah And once again, it's free Palestine Y'all niggas got the flies Got no pause in my mind I'm blowing up like a mind And then I'm coming back right on your eyes I got Palestinian crips and bloods that show love I got Arabs that do the same thing when I'm in they hood I got Mexicans that say, po, you all good I got Lebanese killers with Lebanese triggers With Lebanese niggas that bomb on your niggas whenever it's time So don't go there, we right here in the flesh like David Koresh What's next? I'm like Osho with a black flow with a verbal faux faux that'll make the dough close like fuck that nigga. I'm Joe L. Ortiz if he was raised in STL. That's the Citadel, I'd give him hell. I'm big pun if he ain't die and lost a little bit of weight and got a suntan on your dumb ass. I'm motherfucking Machiavelli if he ain't go to Vegas and stayed in LA and blew up and became even more major. That's the story. <laughs> Tef, oh shit, bro. <laughs> God damn, man. Awesome oh, days, bro. Shit, I know he's gonna bless me like that. I, I, seriously, I know, I know you're a dope ass MC, 
but I didn't know you had the freestyle, but now, but my ass ain't doing enough history because you was actually on Freestyle Friday on yeah, the competition. Yeah, 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 yeah. 106 and Park B t yeah, shirt, yep, right? Yep, yep, yep. I was a champ on that boy, uh, undefeated. You was an undefeated champ that year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 20, I, I think it was 2013 going into 2014. That's December 2013, January. 2014. That's man. amazing, bro. That shit is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, I was a freestyle champ on that thing, man. It was, uh, and I'm still, the crazy part is I don't even freestyle as much as I should be freestyling. So I'm, I still got it in me, but I just be getting, I'm just getting, brushing up the cobwebs. You know what I'm saying? Can we, are there clips of it on YouTube? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was crazy because during Ferguson, for some reason, I felt like BT snatched my shit prior to that. They snatched it off the line they for some it down, reason. Took it down. But then as I started to get more popular, they was like, yo, oh dude, we, we actually had one and they put it back up. You know what I'm saying? That's crazy, though. Yeah, That's man. crazy, y'all. Thank you so much, my brother. You bless me. Word, bro. Word. Again, toughpo.com. Yes, man. Toughpo.com. You got the book coming out, Rebel to America. Rebel to America, baby. We got a lot of shit in the works, man. A lot of shit in the works, man. I'm just trying to. See it through, dog. See it through, man. I, I feel like what we're doing could really change the, the the way people viewing folks that make politicized music. You know what I'm saying? Only and, when you're dropping bars like that, everybody's <laughs> gonna listen and check it out, man. It's not you're not like you know shoving it down people's throats, basically. Yeah, you know? man. You know? We bringing the authentic vibes, the, the shit people been wanting, man. You know? That was incredible, bro. That's what I'm trying to bring, man. Just. I'm just trying to bring it. <laughs> and, I love, and I love how you do the international connection, solidarity, yeah. Palestine, Mexico, you know, bringing up, you know, different issues that, yeah, man. that were related much more than we think. From like, I, from like IOT Napa, you know, some of my people uh, from Ferguson went out there, my boy T-Dub and his girl Rika went out to IOT Napa uh, when the students turned up missing, you know what I'm saying? So we, we always been about spreading that international love, you feel me? We always been about that. Cause we in Brooklyn. Yeah. Tef Poe. Uh. I. Yo, nobody ever was as broke as me. I like that. It's the future in my composition. I write that. Came back from the dead in the flesh like yes, I was right back. A psychic with a hi-hat. Now how you write that? Now how you like that? This verbal prophecy. Nobody stopping me. It's not complete. I feel like Bond. Add a James to it. I came back from death with a lighter. Add a flame to it. I was unknown, but I write it. Not a name to it. They like goddamn Pope. That's how you came through it from St. Louis to the streets of Brooklyn to the depths of Lebanon like you fucking Farrakhan when I let it off. Yeah, it was never soft. Yo, how they manifest us? We them top time ghetto investors. Next up, fuck it, yo. My kids used to ride a school bus. Now they ride a Lamborghini. You understand a Feeny? That's the mind frame of a rich black panther with a bunch of click clack answers like tap dancers, y'all. Can't stop us, we like the verbal prophets that keep on coming back like, what is it, yeah? It's freestyle, that's why it's got some pauses in it. Y'all don't do that no more, I'm representing. I take it back to the 90s, that's where you find me. Tupac's death was untimely And I can say how they did easy was kinda grimy So now in the pause in the epicenter of Where they both existed is where you gotta find me I see the inquisitions of Christopher Columbus And what becomes us, it kinda numbs us Yeah, sky's the limit, I had to represent it Tough yeah. Home. yeah They couldn't tell I was dead From St. Louis to Delaware We was searching for some retail space I found the girl rapper, she the female mace Yeah at an ad lib, I'm paranoid. <laughs> but still trying to sign a bad boy. Like Puffy, if you see this shit and come and get me, we gon' blow up the city and represent like Eli Whitney with the cotton gin. I got a lot of sin. I hope the devil do not let us in, cause I ain't trying to burn for my affirmative action. And I ain't trying to learn from my affirmative rapping. What's concerned with the way that y'all capping? I got a message to y'all young boys out there, busting them glocks in, trying to find yourself hustling blocks. Like the sky's the limit if you know what or not, yo. Did you know what or not? Yeah. Yeah. Tough Poe. 
thank you, my brother. Appreciate you being on the show. Love, man. Love all the work you're doing, man. Love, love. Very inspiring, seriously, since I heard of you. Love, love, man. The Ferguson Uprising, so you're doing your thing, man. I can man. say I kicked some freeze in, in, in yeah. Brooklyn over a Biggie beat. No <laughs> doubt, no doubt. We in Brooklyn, baby. I can say I did that. Yo, know did if you see this. <laughs> seriously. Yeah, man. I, you know, we, we just living our lives, man, creating the content. This is... This. This is what you're doing here is for the generations, man. You know what I'm saying? It may not seem like much, but it's for the generations, man. It's for people to look back on. We live in historical documents of what, what, how we living, what we was doing, what we about. Exactly. You know? No doubt, no doubt. Tefpo.com, check out the website. Make sure you check out his Rest IG page. Rest in peace to the homie majesty. Rest in peace and majesty. We're going to try to get Tefpo to Legendary Cyphers, all right? I'm dropping yeah, it right now. Yeah. All right? We're going to try to get you on. Rest in peace to Madge. R.I.P. Madge. That's a new, new one of the first New York brothers to embrace me, man. So, you know You I'm met Majesty? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. when did you meet? Where did I you meet? I uh, met in probably 2014 or 2015. Okay. I came out here. Uh, I was clicked up with Rebel Diaz, and I met Herabic. That was the Arts Collective? Yeah. Oh, nice. I okay. Met, uh, I met Majesty through Herabic, I think, because she, she had a little thing. What year was that? High 2015. Okay, 2015. so I don't think it was a collective year. That was when he went to Palestine with yeah, us. Yeah, and we was chilling. Yeah, we yeah. was chilling. We was at the A crib. A bunch of people was over there. Nice. I met a lot of folks through that. Through uh, Majesty, yeah. He's, you know, he was on the show right. too. He was supporting me early on when I first started. I appreciate that brother. He was amazing. So did you see the video he did? Yeah, that shit was the, fire. What they do that, that he shot in Palestine with, with Hassan fire. Salam. You know, fire. resistance is resistance. Again, Tefpo, appreciate you, my brother. Love, keep up, man. keep up the amazing work. We're going to support you, love, all right? Love. Peace, y'all. Peace.